Hey, this is Lewis from Oxygen, and in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Oxygen Visual Site Builder for WordPress. Now, Oxygen is the most flexible and powerful visual builder for WordPress in existence, but before we get started, I want to give you a quick overview of the Oxygen interface so you can follow along with the video and understand where everything is. So to add elements to a page in Oxygen, you just click Add, and all your available builder elements are here. You got sections, divs, columns, heading, text. You got helper elements like pricing tables, testimonials. We have a design library with a ton of pre-built designs in it. You can go in there and that way you can rapidly build a page, get previews of the elements, etc. And whatever you click is going to be added to your page. So let's go ahead and add a section to our page from this design set here. Go ahead and add in a call to action section. And here we go, I've now added that to our page. If we wanted to add an individual element, for example, uh, if we wanted to add more text, we could go back to add, basics, text, and there we go. Now to style an element, we just do it with the controls over here on the left. So, okay, I've made the text white, I can make it bigger. If we want to do some advanced styling, we can go over to advanced, and there we get more advanced controls. To adjust spacing of elements, you just mouse over the edge, and you simply drag up and down to space something out, delete, just click up here and you're good to go. Then we have a structure panel over on the right side. This will show a list of all the elements on your page. You could drag and drop these from right here to reorder them. You could also drag and drop elements directly on the page to reorder them. And when you're done, you just click save, save your changes and you can go back to WordPress, either the admin panel or your front end. You click manage, we've got our settings, our configuration options, things like global styles, fonts, that sort of thing. And then for mobile responsive, we have our little screen icon here. You can click that and change to preview your design at different device widths. And then from here, you can create styles for only this width and below. Okay, let's get started. The beauty of Oxygen's WooCommerce integration is that you can override the WooCommerce styles on a global basis. So just like a theme, you can get it looking on brand in just a few clicks. You can get it matching your styles. Yet you also have the ability and the flexibility to build totally custom layouts for every part of WooCommerce. Your products, your shop, your cart page, your account pages every other part of WooCommerce. So I've already set up an example site here, but I haven't tweaked the design at all. I'm just using the default WooCommerce styles that ship with Oxygen. Let's go ahead and set up a template for our WooCommerce product layout. So a custom layout for a product. So to do that, I'm gonna go to new, template. I'm gonna call this product, inherit the header and footer from the main template. And we're gonna set this to apply to products. And let's go ahead and save this and then edit with Oxygen. So to create the layout for our products, I'm gonna first add in a section and then I'm gonna add in the product builder element. So go to the WooCommerce tab and you'll see all of your available WooCommerce elements here. I'm gonna add in a product builder. And the product builder's default layout is just gonna be the default layout provided by WooCommerce with some spiced up styles to make it look good. And let's preview some other product here. So you can see how the layout looks. There it is. Now, if we wanted to do a custom layout for a product, we have all these individual elements that we can add inside the product builder to override this layout. So let's go ahead and set up a two column layout. So go to basics, columns, we'll go 50-50. And in the right column, I will add product images. So I can also just search that in the add section, we'll go product images. And then over here, I can go to WooCommerce or search. We can go product title. We can add in the product description. Or probably better to use the product excerpt, actually. That's a shorter description. So we don't need the long description there. Let's add in the price. Let's add in the add to cart button. This would also include any variation drop downs. Let's drag that down. What else do we want to put in here? Maybe the product meta information, if it's in any categories. And then below the columns. Let's add in the product tabs. Let's add a little bit of space there. And let's space this out a little bit too. So we probably wanna move this add to cart stuff to the bottom, maybe categories above that. Give this a little space, bring this down. 
bring this up. And there we go, there is our custom WooCommerce layout. You could add any other elements you want in here, so you could create really any layout you could possibly imagine with WooCommerce. So let's go ahead and save this and take a look at a new tab on the front end. And here we go, let's add this to our cart. It says it's been added to the cart, let's view the cart. And there we go. Now if we wanted to customize the layout here, we could go to the individual elements and tweak the styles. Right, we could go over here, we could go over to the input, so we could customize, you know, maybe how big is the font. We could make it bigger, we could make it smaller, you could do whatever you want. But the best way to do it, to get a consistent look across your site, is actually do this on a global basis. And that is the beauty of Oxygen's WooCommerce integration. You could go to Manage, Settings, Global Styles, WooCommerce. And from here you can control the colors, the styles, the border radiuses used for every part of WooCommerce. So you can instantly get your site on brand. So the rest of my site is kind of using this white, silver, gold, black color scheme. Let's override these colors with those colors. And then my buttons are also, they have a sharp corner, no radius. So let's override those radiuses and get everything looking consistent. So I'm going to go to buttons and let's just set the color to my already set up global colors. Actually, I should probably swap those. This is probably the main color. This is going to be the hover color. We're going to use a dark color for the tertiary CTAs. Let's use that same dark, but maybe make it a little lighter on hover. And instead of border radius of four, we're going to use a border radius of zero. That does our buttons. We also have global styles for links. So let's set up the same colors for our links. These are just coming from my already saved global colors. For a focused input, let's use this same gold. We don't want any radius on our inputs. And maybe actually we want to use, instead of have an outline around the input, we just want the input to be kind of gray. So we'll make the input background, do I have a silver somewhere? Yeah, let's use atomic alternate. Maybe that's not quite dark enough. Let's darken that a little bit and then use that same for the other, for the background, same as background and border. That'll give us just a rectangle and Tax looks good. Notifications for our meshes color, we're gonna use this. For error color, let's change it to something like orange or red and info color, we're gonna use the same gold. And miscellaneous, sale badge color, we'll set that to gold. Star ratings, we'll use gold as well. And widgets, we'll, we're not using WooCommerce widgets on this site, so we'll just leave as is. And now let's refresh this, and you'll see we didn't have to, have to actually go to the cart widget and edit it individually. Boom, it looks good, it looks consistent. We now have a consistent look across the site. If we take a look at a product layout, there we go. Same styles, consistently applied. I think this is a little dark, so let's tweak that. Save and refresh, and beautiful, looks good. Let's take a look at the shop page. There we go, these styles take effect absolutely everywhere without you really having to do any work at all. Oxygen's Gutenberg integration turns Oxygen into the world's first ever drag and drop visual Gutenberg block builder. That's right, you can now build Gutenberg blocks in Oxygen visually. So here I have a little about page that I've, uh, I've made up in Oxygen. And let's say I want to make one of the sections on this page a Gutenberg block. I just click on the section, go over to the structure panel, click the menu icon, copy to block, and I'll call this my Gutenberg block. Click OK, and this is now a Gutenberg block that can be added in Gutenberg, and the text, the links, the images can be edited directly inside of Gutenberg. We can also turn an entire page into uh, something that's editable in Gutenberg. This is great for building client sites because this ensures that they can edit their site content in Gutenberg but ensure they never have access to Oxygen. They won't even know Oxygen is installed which means they can't break anything. So let's go ahead and do that for this page. So I'll save the page, go back to the WordPress admin and I want this to be editable in Gutenberg. I'm just going to check make this full page editable in Gutenberg. Save. And boom, this page is now editable in Gutenberg. So I can change this text. I can change this text. You can edit whatever you want uh, in terms of text, images, 
icons. So let's say I want to swap out this image. I just click on the image. Let's upload a new image. And there we go. There is our new image. So the client can now edit their site in Gutenberg. They'll never know Oxygen exists. So you don't need to pay for white labeling. Like with Beaver Builder, it's $399 for the license that includes white labeling. Well, in Oxygen, we just have the role manager. So you can just go over to Oxygen settings. I won't save those changes here. And I'll just go to role manager. And we're going to give the editor, the client, instead of having full access to Oxygen, no access. And let's go ahead and now log out and log in as the editor. And go over to this page. And here we go. They can edit this page now in Gutenberg, but they can't drag anything around or break it. And they never know Oxygen exists. Oxygen's flexible header builder element makes it easy to create beautiful, responsive, multi-row headers. So I have a header builder on the page. Let's go ahead and design a header so you can see how it works. So on this header row, I'm going to set the background color to black. And I'm going to go ahead and add in an image. This will be our logo. Let's browse for the logo. I've already uploaded it, so I'll select that image. I'll give it a height of, say, 24 pixels. And I'll go ahead and add in a menu here. So I'll go add menu. And I'll also add in a button, call to action button. Just change the text here, we'll say sign up now. Let's just drag this over to the right. And let's drag the menu to the center. And then let's customize the menu styles a little bit. So let's make this text white, say 14 pixels, two pixel letter spacing, uh, uppercase, font weight of 500. Okay, and that looks pretty good for a menu. And let's say we want to have a multi-row header. We can add a second row. So let's add another row. Maybe we want the phone number business hours in this row. So we'll set the background color to black and let's add a text element. Okay, we'll say it's gonna be the phone number, 1-888-234-5678. We'll go ahead and make that white, 14 pixels. And let's add in some business hours on that right side. So we'll just say Monday open, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And let's go over to size and spacing, add a little bit of padding here, space it out. So go six pixels on the top and the bottom. And there we go. Now we have our multi-row header here. Let's correct the hover colors on those links. We don't need a border. And for the hover background color, we'll just make it like this. And there we go. That looks pretty good right there. Now some cool things you can do with the headers. You can make the header sticky. So when you scroll down, you can make it stick to the top of the screen. To do that, we'll just enable sticky functionality and with no code at all, you get a sticky header. You can even set that to fade in, get a nice little fade animation when the header becomes sticky. So that looks great. Now another thing you may want to do is have a customized sticky header. In other words, when the header is sticky, you want to display st uh, different content. Well, Oxygen's header builder element makes that really easy. This is the beauty of having a dedicated header builder, unlike other builders where you're just building the header with a section or a row you don't have this dedicated header functionality that's really useful on a lot of sites. So let's say we want to display this row, but a little bit differently. Let's say we don't want this, this, this menu in there. We just want the call to action and maybe a phone number. So let's duplicate this row and we'll delete the menu out of there. And we're going to put uh, some text in there. We'll say uh, call this number or they can sign up. Let's add a little space on this button. And let's add a little space on this row so it's just the button's not right up against the edge. And now what we're going to do is choose to only show this row in the sticky header. And then we're going to hide these rows when the header is sticky. So we'll choose hide and sticky and hide and sticky. Now when the header becomes sticky, we get our totally customized header row. So that's great if you want to do like landing pages and you want like your main call to actions always to be stuck to the top of the screen, but you don't want to waste space with the distracting menu. That's a great way to do it. And then another thing you can do with the header builder is you can make the header display as an overlay, which is very easy. You just check a box. So we'll go over to the header builder, go to overlay, 
and let's enable the overlay header uh, above 1120 pixels. And there we go. Now the header becomes transparent and it overlays the preceding section. There we go. Header builder and oxygen create beautiful responsive headers with ease. Oxygen has a ton of features that make it easy to really spice up your designs and make your websites pop. Let's take a look at our scroll animations functionality. So any element you want to add a scroll animation to, you just click the element, you go to advanced, effects, animate on scroll, and enable animation. And from here we have the most configurable scroll animations uh, ever seen in a visual builder. So let's set this to fade up. So when the user scrolls to this section, this will fade up. Let's give it a duration of 250 milliseconds. Set the animation easing to ease. Uh, we'll set no delay. And we're only going to animate this once. So when they re-scroll, it won't be animated again. And then a useful little design tip is to use different animation durations to sort of get, get a cool effect. So let's animate this subheading as well. Go effects, animate on scroll, enable animation, and we're going to set this one to also fade up, but a duration of 500 milliseconds. Same easing, it's going to be ease, no delay, animate only once. Then let's set up sort of a staggered animation effect on these cards. It goes like one, two, three, four. You see them animate in one at a time. So we'll click the first card, we'll go advanced effects, animate and scroll, enable animation and we'll choose zoom out down. So zoom out down, there it is, and you see a preview of what zoom out down looks like. So we're just gonna have to go boom, one, boom, two, boom, three, boom, four, all in a row. So this one, we're gonna say animation duration 250 milliseconds with a delay of 750 milliseconds. So it'll wait 750 milliseconds until it actually animates this into view. We're only gonna animate that once, Okay, now let's do the next one. Same thing, advanced effects, animate and scroll, enable animation, zoom out down, animation duration, 250. But this one, we're gonna give it a delay of 1,000 milliseconds. So this one's gonna go first, then this one's gonna go a quarter of a second later. Animate only once. Okay, let's do the same thing for this next one. Enable animation, zoom out down, animation duration, 250. This one we're gonna delay by 1250, animate once, and let's go ahead and do the same thing for the last one. Animate on scroll, enable animation, zoom out down, 250, animation delay. This one's gonna be a 1250 delay. And now we scroll this into the viewport or just load the page since it's at the top of the screen, we're gonna get these effects. So let's go ahead and take a look. And look at that, one, two, three, four, such a cool effect. Now let's go ahead and set up animations for this section as well. If you want to animate multiple elements in the same way, you can just animate the container. So we'll click the div that contains both this heading and subheading, advanced effects, animate and scroll, and enable animation. We're going to set this to slide right, and we're going to give it a duration of 500 milliseconds and only animate once. And then let's do the same thing for the div containing this image. We're going to set that to flip left. So that's going to look like that. And we're going to give that a 500 millisecond duration uh, and a 250 millisecond delay. So first this will animate in and then this will flip in from the left and only animate that once. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Take a look on the front end. And let's scroll down and look at that. Let's see it one more time. There it is beautiful effect with animate on scroll and we also have global scroll animation settings if you go to manage settings global styles animate on scroll if you're going to use the same animation duration or delays for all of the elements on a particular page or site wide you can just set that up right here and then the only thing you'd have to do on a particular element is enable the animation and it would automatically pull the global settings from right there so that could save you a ton of time Let's take a look at element states. This is where the power and flexibility of oxygen really shines far beyond the competition. So right now I have three link blocks, link wrappers. It's each one of these a rectangular link. And we wanna set up a custom hover state. In other words, we wanna make some cool effect happen when the user hovers over. So let's click the element. 
go to the state dropdown, and we'll choose the hover state. And if you're a CSS wizard, we've also got before, after, any custom state, nth child, any pseudo class, you can do it all. So if you're advanced, you're going to love this. But let's keep it simple for now and go to the hover state. And let's set up a custom effect on hover. Let's go to advanced effects. And Oxygen has all sorts of great effects to really make your designs pop, to make things visually stunning. I'm going to go to transform. And let's add a transform. So we'll say on hover, we're going to scale up, let's say, make it a little bit bigger. And let's add uh, a 3D effect. So let's add some perspective. We'll give it 1,000 pixels of perspective. And then we will rotate it along the y-axis and take a look at that. OK, let's say that's what we're going to We're going to rotate it negative 23 degrees on hover. Let's click outside the element. Now you mouse over, and it rotates. But that's so choppy, so let's set up a transition. So we'll go back to Advanced, Effects, Transition, and we're just going to add a transition duration of, say, 0.5 seconds, and there we go. Smooth hover effect. Beautiful. One of the biggest time savers in Oxygen is our multi-element styling feature that's made possible through classes. So if elements have the same class, for example, this image has the conference testimonial to avatar class, they will have the same styles, right? We can edit styles in one place and it'll affect every single one of the elements. Let's go ahead and add another image here. Drag this up. Let's give it that same class conference testimonial to avatar, and it will automatically get the same styles as the other images. I already have classes set up for these headings. They all have the exact same class. So let's go ahead and edit the styles here. And you notice tweaking in one place updates the styles everywhere. There's no need to copy and paste styles, which also results in a ton of unnecessary CSS output. You simply edit the styles in one place and everywhere the class is used, the changes take effect. This makes it really easy to get a consistent look across your entire site. We regularly have people posting in the Oxygen Facebook group showing off their excellent page speed scores, their fast load times, and talking about how they could never get those results with other page builders. Here we've got somebody who said never had site performance like this. Um, here we've got, what do you guys think? Built with Oxygen, he's got page speed 99, Y-slow 94, fully loaded 0.6 seconds, page size 274 kilobytes. Um, here we've got another one, post all his performance reports saying getting 95% on page speed, Y-slow, dare boost. After 10 years of WordPress work, I have never so easily achieved such consistently good stats. So the reason for that is Oxygen is bloat free. What that means is it doesn't load unnecessary bloat, it only loads what you put on the page. So I want to show what other builders load, Element or Beaver Builder Divi, versus Oxygen. And I'm not doing this to try to convince people that are using Element or Beaver and Divi. We get a lot of people interested in Oxygen who say, I would never ever use a visual builder because the code output is horrible and they load a bunch of bloat. Well, that's true with other visual builders. But it's not true with Oxygen. Oxygen is clean, it's lean, it's like hand coding. So here I have an Oxygen page. I just put a heading and a button on the page. And I ran a performance report for it. It's on a terrible server, so you can ignore the load times. There's no gzip compression. But look at the waterfall. You can see what's loaded here. We load the page. We load very small default CSS. The page CSS, which is only 301 bytes. And another very small default CSS file. So very small, very, very, very minimalist. Only what you use on the page is loaded. Now let's go ahead and by comparison, take a look at the Divi page, which also has simply a heading and a button. Let's take a look at the performance report for the Divi page and we'll see that it has a page size of one megabyte, which is ridiculous. I mean, its default styles are almost 600 kilobytes, which is preposterous. I don't know why dash icons is being loaded on the front end. 45 kilobytes. Um, I'm sorry, we can forget about jQuery. That's a default WordPress thing. I should have disabled that for this test to be fair. So, okay, we'll call it 
one megabyte instead of almost 1.1 megabytes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just there's so much ridiculous stuff in here that just should not be there. I mean, 250 kilobytes of custom JavaScript, 90 kilobyte true type font file, which is for the admin. It just makes no sense that this stuff is loaded. And it's just going to slow down your pages. Beaver Builder is much better than Divi. Here's my Beaver Builder page with Beaver Builder theme and Beaver Themer installed. And if we take a look at the performance report here, I mean, we're still loading. I mean, it's not as bad, but 150 kilobytes of CSS here, uh, 20 kilobyte JavaScript file, and then it's loading this font awesome dot font file, which is 72 kilobytes, but we're not even using any font awesome icons on the page. So why? Why is it loaded? It shouldn't be loaded. And then let's go over to Elementor, just a heading and a button and 700 kilobytes. Why is this 700 kilobytes? It doesn't need to be 700 kilobytes, but look at what it loads. It loads CSS for the icons. It loads font awesome. It loads CSS for animations. It loads 90 kilobytes and then another 180 kilobytes of front end default CSS, 18 kilobytes global CSS, which is fine. That That's okay. But I mean, some of this stuff is just pushing it. Here we've got, I mean, it's loading JavaScript for waypoints, for swiper, 36 other, I mean, 120 kilobyte JavaScript for a swiper script, but we're not even using a slider on the page. With Oxygen, if you use a slider, it'll load your slider JavaScript. And if you don't, it won't be loaded, but Elementor is just dumping it on your page regardless. And then we also have people complaining about the HTML output, and I can see why. For example, let's take a look at the Oxygen heading and... What do we see? Body, section, div, heading. I mean, this is clean code. This is what you'd write if you hand coded something. But if we take a look at Elementor's heading, I mean, it is nested one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, look at, if you see the blue area here, it doesn't even change size. It's just unnecessary elements. Seven, I mean, seven levels inside the section and then a total of eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 levels deep of nested HTML elements. No coder would ever write code like this, so I totally understand why a lot of coders and more professional developer types are so against visual builders, but I just want to illustrate Oxygen is not like that. This is clean code. It's not unwieldy. It's easy to work with if you're going to create custom CSS. And then for Beaver Builder, it's the same. I mean, if you look at this HTML output, it's just, it's preposterous how many levels of nesting there are to display a heading in a button. It's insanity. Divi's not, not quite as bad, but it's still pretty bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight levels of nesting. I guess nine, 10, 11. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's ridiculous. So I totally understand all the people who say they wouldn't use visual builders. I just hope that now that you've seen this, you won't lump oxygen into that category. You'll understand that oxygen is clean, it's lean, it's bloat free. This is a default page in Oxygen, whereas this is a default page in Divi. And to be fair to Divi, we should have subtracted jQuery. So instead of calling it 1.1 megabyte, we can call it a megabyte. Either way, it's absolutely ridiculous. To help you get beautiful websites up and running quickly, Oxygen has a design library with a huge amount of pre-built page templates, and sections which you can mix and match to create your own page designs. Uh, everything in the library is totally responsive. If you want to see everything, go to product tour and then library on our website and you can take a look at demos of all the available library sites. All of these can be imported, the complete website, to your site in one click or you can use individual headers, sections, or any of the other elements you see on these pages in your designs. So let's go over to Oxygen and quickly build something using the design library. So you go to add and then go to library, design sets, and everything is organized by design set. Everything in a design set is going to look good together. So I'm going to go to atomic and then we have our pre-made pages or our sections and elements where we've got call to actions, content, footers, headers, heroes, everything you could need. So let's go ahead and add in a header to the page. And then below that, we'll add in a hero section. And below that hero section, we're going to add in some testimonials or social proof. Let's put in this grid of three testimonials. 
And below these testimonials, let's add some content. We're building a landing page, basically. And then below these this content, let's add in a call to action section. And let's uh, wrap this up with a footer. And here we go. There is our page, which we created in you know 30 seconds. And these are very easy to customize as well. So let's say you just want to change the color scheme. All the design sets use global colors. So you can very easily go to Manage, Settings, Global Styles, Colors, and you can now edit all the colors used by this design set. So let's say I have a purple color scheme on my site. I'll just go ahead and change these colors. And look at that, I've now updated the site to the new color scheme in three clicks, super easy. And the design sets, they also make use of classes so you can easily consistently style the design set. For example, with a typical builder, let's say you wanna tweak maybe the font size here, it wouldn't also affect the other elements. But in Oxygen it does because we use classes so you can very easily adjust sizes, um, adjust styles, and get a consistent look across the entire site. Responsive design in Oxygen is flexible, powerful, and simple. You simply choose the device width you want to edit styles for, and then tweak styles for that device and below. So let's go ahead and take a look at our design as the screen gets smaller. And right here it's getting a little bit cramped. So I'd say right here we should stack our columns vertically. We'll choose stack columns vertically, less than 992. So on all devices, horizontal, less than 992, vertical. And maybe less than 992, we also want to shrink this heading size. We've already selected less than 992. Select the heading. Turn down the font size. We get all devices with the bigger fonts less than 90, 992 with the smaller fonts. You can edit every single CSS property like this for all devices, page container, and then three additional media queries. So you got a total of five different breakpoints you're controlling styles for. Let's go down to less than 768. Still looks okay. Less than 480, this is a little bit cramped. So instead of making these 50% width, which they are, they're 46% width over here. Let's make them 100% width, and there we go. And then maybe we wanna stack our columns in the opposite order when we stack vertically. So we'll go to the columns, and we should reverse the column order at less than 992. And there we go, all devices, page container, below 992, below 768, and below 480. It's very simple to create responsive designs in Oxygen. Let's take a look at Oxygen's modal element. So we can use the modal for light boxes. We click a button and up pops a light box with any content in it. Use the modal display a contact form, for example. Let's go into Oxygen and set up a modal menu. So when clicking this menu icon right there, we want to open up a modal off canvas menu. So I've already created the menu here. Let's go ahead and add a modal element to our page, put the menu in the modal, and make it open up when I click this icon. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a modal. And here's our modal. And then I'm simply gonna drag this menu into my modal. Now let's go ahead and set up the modal style. So I'll click on the modal. I'll go to modal styles. I'm going to set this to display on the left side of the screen. I'm going to go to advanced, size and spacing, set the height to 100 VH, that'll make it the full height of the browser. And now let's go ahead and set this modal to open up when we click this button. So to do that, I'll go to the modal, go to primary, trigger, show when user clicks element, choose my trigger selector by simply clicking on the element I wish to open the modal. And that's all we have to do. Let's take a look on the front end. And here's our page. Let's click the menu icon. 
and voila, there is our modal menu. Conditions in Oxygen allow you to conditionally show or hide any element based on virtually any variable in WordPress. Here, I've set up a quick member dashboard on this site. It's got a few tabs of content, but I only want to show this dashboard to members when they're logged in. We can set that up using conditions, so let's jump into Oxygen and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, here we are in the back end of Oxygen. Now, the first order of business is to hide this section if the user viewing it is not logged into our site. So to do that, we'll select the section and then we'll go up to the conditions icon in the properties pane and click set condition. We're gonna add a condition and choose user logged in right here equals, and we'll set that to true. So now, we should only ever see that if the user that's viewing it is logged in. But we might want to show something to people who are not logged in. So let's add another section. And let's add a div. And let's go to WordPress and add a login form. We'll style this up just a little bit. And let's grab this div, make it a little bit wider. Go to advanced size and spacing and make it like 300 pixels wide. That should look good. And then we need to select the section and make sure everything is centered. Now let's add a heading too to tell people to log in. So let's do a heading. And let's say, please log into view dashboard. And we'll put that up top. Perfect, a little bit of spacing below that, and I think that's a good enough login prompt for users that are logged out. So we'll go up to our conditions icon again with this section selected, go to set conditions, add, and we'll choose user logged in, but this time we'll choose equals false. So now this should only ever be shown to a user that's not logged in. Now let's jump into the front end to see what that looks like. As a logged in user, we see our member dashboard, but if we jump into an incognito window, we should see our login form. And there you have it. Also note that if Oxygen's built-in conditions don't accomplish what you need, you can register your very own conditions using Oxygen's Conditions API. Dynamic data in Oxygen allows you to design templates that dynamically display content from the posts, pages, or custom post types that those templates render. This can include the title of those posts, the content of those posts, meta fields, or content from advanced custom fields or tool set, both of which we have an integration with. So let's jump into the back end and I'll show you what I have set up. Here we have a list of properties. This is a custom post type. And if we jump into one of these, you'll see we've set up a bunch of advanced custom fields with data about the property. To render this, we're going to set up an archive template that renders a list of properties. So let's jump into that template and we'll edit with oxygen. Now that we're editing our properties archive template, we're going to add a section and a repeater. The repeater is a visual loop builder that allows us to insert elements and pull dynamic data from the posts that are being queried. We're gonna do a two column layout. So let's throw some columns in here and we'll make them 50-50. And then for the left column div, we're actually gonna set its background image to the featured image of each post. So we'll insert that. And then we're gonna adjust the background size to cover, set the left and top to 50% so that it's nice and centered. Let's go ahead and go to advanced size and spacing and set the min height to something like 300 pixels. Perfect. Now within this div, I'm going to add a heading and this heading will be the title of the property post. So let's double click that and we will go up to the top bar, insert data, and we'll choose title. So this will be the title 
of the property. And let's change the text color to white and let's add a bit of padding around it, maybe 15 pixels all the way around. And let's change the background to a transparent black. Go black and then adjust the transparency down. And then we're gonna select the div and just position everything in the center and at the bottom. Now let's jump over to the right side of this column and start out putting some of the other dynamic data that is on these property posts. So we're going to first, let's adjust the sizing of this. Uh, I want a little bit of padding. Let's do like 15 pixels around this. And then we're going to go to add and let's add a div. And then let's add a text element in that div. And then here we can start listing some of our properties. So let's see what fields we have available here. Double click the text, insert data, advanced custom fields. We're gonna go with price right up front, why not? Insert, and then we'll prepend that with price. And as you can see, we now have the price. Okay, so we're gonna actually style this div up a little bit. We're gonna set, go to advanced size and spacing with 100% and padding bottom is going to be five pixels and we'll go to borders and bottom and we're going to set it to a very very light gray and set it to one pixel solid so now we have kind of a table row type of look so we'll duplicate that and let's start inserting some other dynamic data so now let's look at what our next field will be We'll go to advanced custom fields and we'll go to bedrooms and prepend that with bedrooms. And then let's just throw another one in there, duplicate it and do advanced custom fields. And then we'll go to bathrooms that's a good thing to know about a property if you're purchasing it and prepin that with bathrooms. And then let's throw one more in there at least. Let's duplicate that and double click to edit the text, insert data, advanced custom fields, and we'll do address. That should be enough information. And then finally, we're going to add a button here. And for the URL of the button, we'll use data and go to the post's permalink. So if we want to view the property, we can do so. Now let's change the button color to this charcoal black and change the text color to this gold. Okay, that way we match our header. Now we can uh, add some spacing above that and below the div, do 30 pixels, and then that looks pretty good. Now let's style our uh, div a little bit that contains our columns element. So we're gonna go to advanced size and spacing and let's, let's add 15 pixels of padding around that. And then let's change the background color to something a little different, maybe a slight off-white. Okay, and then we're gonna go to advanced borders and we're gonna set a four pixel border radius on all sides. And then we're gonna go to advanced effects box shadow and do a slightly transparent shadow here. So let's drop that down quite a bit and set it to zero uh, horizontal offset, zero vertical offset, uh, 25 blur and negative 10 spread and then make sure it's not inset because we don't want that and then under advanced size and spacing we're going to add 30 pixels of margin i think and then there you have it so now let's take a look on the front end to see how this dynamic data is being rendered now again note that i only designed the first listing uh, but if we look on the front end you'll see that every single listing has different data listed from the post different titles, different images, and different permalinks for the buttons.